Stop. Before you click away thinking this is another Tesla phone hype video, listen to this. The iPhone 17 Pro scratches easier than aluminum foil. Thousands of buyers over 50 paid $1,199 for a phone that looks beat up after two weeks. Elon Musk said it best. <laughs> I recommend complaining to the phone manufacturers. <laughs> Today, I'm answering seven questions that reveal why the Tesla Pi phone at just $199 could change everything. If you've typed, where do I buy the Tesla phone into Google, what I'm about to tell you isn't what you expect. Critical warning, if you see any link claiming pre-order the Tesla Pi phone now, stop immediately. Those are scams to steal your money. There is zero legitimate way to buy this phone today. Any site asking for payment is fraud. As of December 2025, there is no official Tesla phone for sale. This video separates real engineering facts from fantasy specs. The biggest obstacle isn't hardware or technology, it's the invisible war that's killed every phone competitor for the last decade, and it's the reason Apple sleeps peacefully at night while pretending to innovate. Hit that subscribe button because this channel does analysis, not hype. Where to buy and when available. Question 1. Where can I buy it and when is it available? Short answer, not yet. You've seen videos with people holding what looks like a Tesla phone. Here's the reality. Concept renders from designers. AI generated images that look real, but are fake. 3D printed mockups based on leaked patents. Fan made prototypes with Tesla logos slapped on. Scam artists create fake reservation pages that look professional. They use Tesla's logo without permission. Don't fall for it. When Tesla officially launches, it will be announced on Tesla's verified website and Elon Musk's verified social media. If I see a legitimate announcement, I'll pin it in the top comment within 24 hours. But here's the harder question. If you've been waiting a year and still see nothing, maybe the right question isn't when, but why hasn't Tesla done it yet? Is it real? Did Elon actually say this? Question 2. Is this real or marketing hype? Some channels stretch the truth using old Elon quotes out of context. Here's how I evaluate if something is real. Supply chain evidence. Are there factory leaks or component orders? Software development. Is there an OS in beta testing? Sales infrastructure. Are Tesla stores being trained? Right now, silence on all three. Does that mean it's impossible? No. Tesla revealed the Cybertruck out of nowhere, but you should be skeptical of anyone claiming they know exactly when it's launching. Instead of asking, is this real or fake, ask which business model makes sense for Tesla. Apple made $72 billion from iPhone sales last year. Tesla? They're an energy and transportation ecosystem. Which brings us to Starlink. Everyone thinks it means free internet forever, but the engineering reality is way more complicated. Free Starlink. Is it actually possible? Question 3. Will the Tesla phone come with free Starlink internet for life? Here's what people want to hear. Yes, unlimited data works everywhere. Here's what an engineer says. It depends on what you mean by free and unlimited. Starlink isn't a traditional cell network. It's thousands of satellites for broadband internet. To work on a phone, Tesla must shrink the antenna, manage power so it doesn't drain battery in two hours, and navigate international regulations. Three likely models. Scenario A, three to six months free, then $15 monthly for 10 gigabytes. Scenario B, phone costs $199 with free basic Starlink tier for life, but limited to five megabits per second and five gigabytes monthly. Premium costs extra. Scenario C, free Starlink only if you own a Tesla car or Powerwall. For skeptics, you're right to question free forever. 
for believers, Tesla has infrastructure no other phone maker has. Let's say pricing is fair. Can I use this indoors? What about canyons or under trees? Coverage, indoors, international, obstructions. Question four, where will this phone actually work? Let me give you the truth most tech reviewers conveniently skip. Inside buildings, satellite signals struggle with indoor penetration. If you're in a concrete office building or your basement, don't expect full bars from satellite satellites. The radio waves can't penetrate thick walls effectively. Dense forests or urban canyons present similar challenges. Trees, tall buildings, mountains, these all block line of sight to satellites orbiting overhead. That's fundamental physics, not a Tesla limitation. You can't engineer around the laws of nature. International coverage varies dramatically by region. Starlink coverage is excellent across North America, Western Europe, and Australia, but it's still developing and patchy in parts of Asia, Africa, and South America. Add to that, local governments have the power to regulate or outright ban satellite phones. China won't allow them, Russia restricts them heavily, even some European countries have limitations on direct satellite communication devices. This is precisely why the smart engineering move for Tesla would be a hybrid dual-mode system. Use traditional 4G and 5G cellular networks when you're in populated areas with good coverage, exactly like your current phone does today. The phone automatically switches to Starlink satellite mode only when you're genuinely off-grid. Camping in remote wilderness, driving across empty highways through Nevada or Wyoming, boating offshore beyond cellular range. Most importantly, during natural disasters when hurricanes, wildfires, or earthquakes knock out cell towers and you desperately need to reach family or emergency services. Think of it like your car's backup camera. You don't use it every single day, but when you need to parallel park in a tight spot, you're grateful it's there. Same principle here. If you live in Los Angeles, Miami, or Chicago, you probably won't activate satellite mode on a daily basis because your 5G coverage is excellent. But if you spend weekends at a cabin in Montana, or you frequently drive cross-country through rural areas, or you've lived through major storms and remember what it's like when all communication infrastructure fails simultaneously, that's precisely when this feature justifies the phone's price tag. Now here's the concern I hear most often from guys over 55. That's all nice technology, but can I actually make a clear phone call on this thing? Or is it just another oversized touchscreen gadget that's terrible at being an actual phone? Is it a real phone? Size, call quality, basics. Question five, will this be a real phone or just a tablet with a SIM card? You don't want a phone that doesn't fit in your pocket. Speakers too quiet for restaurants. A microphone that sounds like a tunnel. Bluetooth that drops constantly. Apple killed the iPhone mini, claiming nobody wanted it, but millions did. The industry decided everyone wants a 6.7-inch screen, but millions of people over 50 want a phone that's easy to hold and works for calls first, apps second. If Tesla is smart, they'll launch two sizes, Pi Compact, 6.1-inch screen, fits in one hand. Pi Pro, 6.9-inch screen for multimedia. A phone needs excellent microphone noise cancellation, dual stereo speakers, and clear voice quality. But here's the truth. Even if hardware is perfect, Tesla could still fail because of the app problem. It's killed bigger companies than Tesla. Operating system, apps, and switching ecosystems. Question six, what about apps? Can I switch from iPhone or Android without losing everything? This is where new phones die, not because hardware is bad, but because nobody wants to live without apps. Microsoft tried Windows Phone, beautiful interface, excellent hardware, failed because no Instagram or banking apps. Amazon tried Fire Phone, Jeff Bezos has infinite money, failed even harder, same reason. Apps that must work day one. Your bank app, like Chase or Wells Fargo, WhatsApp and email, Google Maps, YouTube and Netflix, DoorDash and Uber, medical portals. 
Tesla needs an Android compatibility layer so existing apps work, a $100 million developer fund to pay top apps to build native versions, early access programs six months before launch. Watch for a Pi developer conference announcement. That's when you know it's real. But there's one issue more sensitive than apps, privacy and security. Privacy, security, data tracking. Question seven. If this phone connects to my car, home energy system, and tracks location via satellite, who controls that data? People worry about AI listening to conversations, 24-7 location tracking. If stolen, can someone unlock my $60,000 car? Will Tesla sell your data? A Tesla phone is higher stakes. Your iPhone stores photos. A Tesla phone unlocks your vehicle, controls your Powerwall battery, manages solar energy, accesses Starlink. Tesla must guarantee military-grade AES-256 encryption like banks use, local processing so data stays on your device, two-factor authentication for car and financial access, remote wipe if stolen, transparent privacy policy in plain English. Elon could change his mind later. Read terms of service before buying. If Tesla changes them after launch, walk away. Now here's what most people miss about why Apple is actually worried. The real threat, ecosystem versus hardware. Apple doesn't fear the camera or battery. They fear Tesla isn't selling a phone, they're selling a lifestyle. Apple's model, sell a $1,200 iPhone, lock you into services. Tesla's model, sell a $199 phone connecting to your $45,000 car, $12,000 battery, and Starlink internet. Let's run the numbers. You're 58, planning one more phone before retiring at 65. iPhone 17 Pro Max, $1,199 upfront, 200 Apple Care, 840 for iCloud storage over seven years, total $2,200. Tesla Pi phone, $199 upfront with free basic Starlink, total $199. Elon could change pricing later. That skepticism is healthy. Judge the phone on launch terms, not promises. Which brings me to my controversial prediction. The Tesla phone at $199 will not have unlimited everything forever. Here's what will happen. Base model costs $199 with 128 gigabytes. Starlink includes free basic tier with speed or data limits, maybe 5 megabits per second. Premium unlimited costs extra. Real value comes from the ecosystem integration, seamless car control, home energy management. It will be a solid iPhone alternative, but not magic. And that's okay. If Tesla delivers 70% of rumors at $199, it's better value than Apple now. The real disruption isn't in specs or features, it's in the business model itself. Traditional phone makers profit from hardware margins and service subscriptions. Tesla profits from the entire ecosystem. Your phone becomes the remote control for your energy-independent life. Every Tesla product you own makes the phone more valuable, and vice versa. This creates a powerful network effect that Apple can't easily replicate. They'd have to build cars, solar panels, and satellite internet from scratch. Meanwhile, Tesla already has millions of customers ready to upgrade their ecosystem with a phone that costs less than Apple's charging cable. The question isn't whether the Pi phone will match iPhone's polish, it's whether Apple can compete when the game changes from selling devices to selling integrated sustainable living. So where do you stand? Comment realist if you think this is marketing that'll never ship. Comment believer if Tesla launches within 24 months. I'll pin the most thoughtful answer. But here's what I really want. What's the one feature making you switch from iPhone or Android? Price? Battery? Starlink? Privacy? Tesla integration? Type it out. I'm genuinely curious, and your feedback shapes my content. If you know someone sending you hype videos about Tesla phone, share this with them, not to prove them wrong, but to help them ask right questions before buying. 
If you want analysis before hype, subscribe. Next week, I'm breaking down Tesla Model 2 and why it threatens the auto industry more than this phone. Remember, technology should serve you, not the other way around. Whether it's Apple, Tesla, or anyone else, demand better. You've earned it. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.